Welcome back, dudes and dudettes, to uh, yet another podcast with Mediocre Dude! We did it! We did it. We are in the same place at the same time. It's amazing. We figured it out. Um, wait a minute. Hold on. You know what I'm going to do for this podcast? This Hold special? up. I'm going to light some candles. Yeah. They this can't is- hear that. Oh, this is going into YouTube. Uh, watch. Listen. Or listen. <laughs> we got two candles... To brighten the room up, maybe I should turn some lights on. Are you offering a cult offering? Yes. Am I a sacrifice? You're, you're totally a sacrifice. This is all stuff I should do before I start the podcast. But we're going to go with it. All right. Anyways. So, uh, today, um, the topic is going to be 2017 E3. 2017? That's we, what, we weren't going to talk about 2018 three, E3? Oh, shit. I mean, that's what people really want to hear about. Well, they haven't done it yet, silly. <laughs> that's why they want to hear about it. Oh. Don't confuse me. You're making me really think maybe it's the 2018 E3. Like, they do it, like, a year ahead. <laughs> like the car models? Yeah, 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 like the car models. Um, so... Uh, it really was an E3 of games coming out in 2018. There was, and that's, and that's what confused me, and I was like, shit, did I say something wrong? <laughs> So, uh, Mediocre Dude and I, we just got breakfast. Um, we were ready to go. He had coffee today. It didn't sit well. <laughs> that's maybe what it is. That maybe, I bet be. you that's what it is. That's gotta be. It's gotta be. You're new to coffee. Um, so anyways. That uh, swill wasn't really coffee anyway. The swill. Quit making fun of coffee. You're upsetting our, our, our listeners. Um, Maybe they would be upset if they had to drink that shitty coffee. I'm certainly not upset. I'm like, mm, that coffee was great. I will have. Or some- that cream was great, at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, fuck. Okay. So uh, later today, this is we're actually right before we do our Final Fantasy 14 live stream. So holy shit. So uh, mediocre is going to be on that. So that's obviously gonna be out you got a twofer you can check the archive out it'll be out at this point maybe i'll leave a a link or a card or something somewhere in the video go check that out if you want to see it um we're super excited so the day is rolling um now it's time for for mr podcast mr Um, podcast i just to kind of get an idea to start it out i've watched uh, some archived live streams of the podcast i watched the sony playstation uh, microsoft Xbox, and then um, Nintendo, Ubisoft, Bethesda, uh, conferences. So those are the only ones that I watched. Um, so, uh, Mediocre Dude? Now, for me, uh, it's like E3 has always been like this holiday. And and I feel like I should observe it. It's like, it's like a gamer orthodox holiday. You're kinda, not really sure... Though, if you want to participate or not, if you don't have you don't have the time. You, right. you, you think you should care, but maybe you don't always care. Right. Like in, in, in an example of that, I didn't watch all the actual streams live. Right. And the, well, there's a ridiculous amount of content at E3. Really, if you wanted to take in the whole thing, like the press conferences isn't even in the majority of the experience. Really, there's demos going on yeah. all day, every day of every game you could imagine. And really, who has time to watch people play video games on the internet? I know. Fuck that. <laughs> so dumb. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's, 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 like a, it's like a big video game convention. Um, probably one of the most popular. And I, I feel like, really, you have to be there. That, that would be the dream. That would be the ultimate experience. Where does E3 even take place? Do you know? Los Angeles this year. Los Angeles. I, usually, I think. I, I don't know when the last time it moved. but Yeah. Um, E3 would be really fun to go to sometime. Um, now, yeah, back to the live streaming thing. It's just like, I don't know, I've got a busy life. Can't always catch the live streams uh, when they happen. Um, if you're a big fan of a certain game, maybe tune into that one, you know? Right. So my, my, my plan of attack was just to wait for all of it to be done and then just binge watch all of them. And I just literally spent, like, not all of them, but the major ones. Yeah. Um, the ones I mentioned earlier. Um, just because it's like, well, I got to get into what's going on if we're going to be doing this podcast, for one. And two, it's also kind of my um, my duty uh, as, as, you know, somebody that really adores video games and uh, has a YouTube channel yeah. about video games. So I figured it would be something uh, completely necessary to do. 
Um, so initial thoughts, uh, I'm just going to come out and say like the two, uh, welcome bird to the podcast. <laughs> um, what did you think about this year's E3 bird? Yeah. Wait. Okay. We get it. <laughs> yeah, we get it. You don't calm down. All right. <laughs> Uh, we know that you're hungry. Stop. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. That, that's what all animals say. Food, 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 food. We usually do the podcast at Mediocre Dude's Place, but today since we're redoing a live stream, we're at my place, so I have birds in my house. Uh, so they'll be making noise, um, but you enjoy it. You guys seem to enjoy the, the tropical atmosphere. <laughs> tropical. <laughs> of being in the rainforest. Um, I guess just to kick it off, uh, my initial impressions... Um, with E3 is that there were some hits, some misses. There were some pretty bad conferences over, uh, like Bethesda. Um, I think it's, if anybody saw it, it was kind of boring up, up until like, um, I would say till Evil Within 2. And then also... So you like Evil Within. I love Evil Within. Uh, it was actually the first LP we did on the channel with Shondo and me. Excellent. And, uh, KC actually live streamed it. I did catch that one. Yeah, so, and he, he yeah, he, he live streamed that, and it's, that's one of his favorite games um, of all time, it seems, so, like, I know he's stoked about it, um, and after watching the actual gameplay of it, it was so relieving, because, like, it looks, it looks basically like they just built upon it, kind of a way, and it's not limited to, because if you think back to the first Evil Within, it came out on PS3 and PS4. Right. Um, because of that, there's limitations. Yep. Such as, like, you can't make the game too exceed the PS3 version too much, or else they won't be able to work multi-plat. Now you got this uh, Evil Within 2 coming out just for the PS4, or just for the next gen. Yep. Or the, the quote-unquote current gen, you know what I mean. Um, so the limitations... Now, does the audience know what you mean? Bar has been set. I, I, think, they, I think they do. The audi- what, I'm, what I'm getting at? Shh. I'm just fucking with yeah, you, Yeah, you're fucking with me. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it looks like the old game, basically in style, but updated graphics is my point, just to, to bring it back home. Um, the Another game that uh, I'm really stoked about uh, coming out um, is Shadow of the Colossus. Basically, just a straight-up remake. Yeah, that'll be pretty amazing. Um, that's and a, that's ahead. a major... Uh, step up for Blue Point Games. Blue Point Games have done has done a number of remasters, like the Metal Gear Solid um, 2 and 3 uh, Peace Walker remaster, and I believe the God of War remasters. So all of those like updates from PS2, that was all Blue, uh, Blue Point. And this is another update from a PS2 game, but being able to take on a full remaster, it's a big step up for them. I, I think that's that's that must be exciting for them as a studio. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we Cactus and I actually uh, did an LP on uh, Shadow of the Colossus. We did the the HD re- remastered version on PS3, and I heard a lot of people were actually upset about that it wasn't a full remake. So I think that they heard those cries and were just like, "Well, we're just gonna fucking do it." And it's just great because it's just a sh- it, it's a straight up remake, kind of like how Resident Evil right. remake was just it was just rebuilt from the ground up because you could tell you could tell that it was just rebuilt from the ground up, which is really cool. Um, definitely a game I'll be streaming. Yeah, it should be really cool, especially since uh, we already know that a lot of our fan base, subscriber base, like Shadow of the Colossus, is based off of uh, our LP. We had a lot of people really enjoy that, so. Um, yeah, what games are you looking forward to? Um, like, I was always looking forward to Star Wars Battlefront, and I'm, I'm hearing that that's coming along nicely. Uh, has a lot of exciting features, like, and the game, and the, um, the campaign. Like, having a Star Wars campaign vid- mode in a video game that isn't really even based on a movie, it's really exciting. Okay. And, uh, I don't know if you've heard at all, but it's based on the perspective of an Imperial officer. No, I have not. You're playing as a bad guess. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm not really... Um, I like Star Wars, the movies, right? Right. But I never really get into the video games. I I wanted to get into Battlefront because the aesthetic is so appealing, but the features just weren't really there to sell me, and it sounds like the second one is really going to sell me. Were you were you a guy in Knights of the Old Republic? I did not actually get into that, because I wasn't really much of a PC gamer when that was out. Yeah, I never got into it. People told me to get into it, but I just thought I didn't MMOs or anything like that. I, I am in MMOs, but not huge on it, but um, it's just too time-consuming. 
Right. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what other games did you see that uh, caught your eye? I'm I'm always um, cautiously optimistic about Assassin's Creed. Uh, Assassin's Creed took its one year hiatus. Um, Mostly releasing remasters and junk like that. <laughs> yeah, Assassin's Creed, I, I, I personally kind of over that series, to be 100% I just honest. always liked exploring the environments. Mm-hmm. So. Cool. Um, it looks like they're, they've made some improvements, but it's still more of the same in Assassin's Creed Origins. And I'm not sure that it's... Is that the one with the ships? No, that's it's in Egypt this year. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did see some footage of Assassin's Creed, that one. Yeah, yeah. Um... It, and I don't know if Egypt is where I expected the origins of Assassin's Creed to be, in fact, but sure. Yeah, who knows Who knows why they chose Egypt. I feel like when... <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like when... When fans wanted to suggest new locations for Assassin's Creed, I always thought that Egypt was a little misguided. It was not really what Assassin's Creed was about, so I'm kind of interested to see what they do with it. Also, I always felt like Japan would make no sense at all. Um, Japan? But, yeah. That'd be really fun, though. I, th- I think that'd be fun to see Assassin's Creed going to Japan. I guess they did China. And I think that... It, well, not in a real game, but no, in their yeah, Chronicles it, series. Yeah. They did, like, China and India. Which and is basically 2D platformer. Right, it was a platformer. Yeah. Um, and I guess that... It can be important to show that this... So Assassins versus Templar is, like, worldwide. It's huge. It's, like, this major conspiracy that, like... Um, underpins everything that the world has ever happened, or like all of world history, basically. So there's something kind of compelling about that. But there's something very European about like the first several games, and then Assassin's Creed Three brought it to America. But even then, it had this the the influence of being Americans, generally the people who left Europe. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, but due to migration. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so it's nice that they, they you know put it throughout different parts of the world. Egypt just seems to be an untapped area yeah. so far. And so that could just be, it, it could just actually be just all bullshit. It, it could just be like, <laughs> what country haven't we done yet? And the, oh, Egypt? That would be a great setting. It Let's is pretty it. cool that the franchise has the ability to do that. They just take any time period they want, any location they want, right. just jam it. And uh, our fans have been receptive to a lot of that, so it's interesting. See, and I was actually one of the people that was super excited about, like, um, Assassin's Creed's future back like in Assassin's Creed two days. Yeah, the was first it? few were was like, very exciting. But then what happened was is I just it has nothing to do with like the culture aspect of it or like the, the- thematics. It's just more I just got bored of the gameplay. Yeah, and that's what because like every it was it turned into Tony Hawk for me where every release started feeling the same exact. Yeah. thing. so I kind of grew out of it. There are some uh, mechanical developments in the origins. Like they've actually changed up the combat a little bit, um, where. You have to time your attacks differently, and you need to actually consider range. Like, it used to be like you just rush in, and you'd be able to attack. Um, and there wasn't much finesse to it. But now there is, it sounds like. Yeah, and it looks like uh, it looks like they are revamping the, the combat system. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks totally different. It looks a lot more like, you know, Ocarina-esque. Yeah. You know, Dark Souls-ish. Uh, I, I would always attribute that sort of uh, combat system to Ocarina of Time. Sure. I'm not 100 percent sure if they're the origins of that. Of, but they know, were one the of the Z first target, like were, uh, yeah. 3D games, basically. Yeah, to do with that that kind of combat. So it, it's inspired many uh, games, you know, in the future ahead. But yeah, you can tell by the clunkiness of it, um, of the gameplay, uh, that it's still new and still in development as far as the combat system goes. I thought it was pretty cool how you can jump with the the bow and arrow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was one of the features that you could do, and, and um. Basically, the guy's the guy's just an ultimate badass. <laughs> I mean, they always are. They're always like superhuman, just climbing everything. They're just like, swimming up buildings. It's ridiculous. Yeah, this may I mean this may have been something a mechanic from the third one, which because I played up to three, so like he basically just jumps and like pulls out his arrow and fires it mm-hmm. in mid air as he's falling down in the enemy, <laughs> which is badass. And then they have the mechanic of uh, the eagle, where you can actually control the eagle. Yeah, and that's uh, actually overhead. a pretty interesting throwback so, where. You know, in all the games so far, I've had this eagle vision that was like the spirit of apparently this very eagle. Mm-hmm. So now you have the original eagle, and it's alive. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, Assassin's Creed Two or not Two, Assassin's Creed Origins. It looks pretty cool. Um, 
I think another thing that kind of got me away from the series was like all the different spinoffs. Mm-hmm. I think if I, I think I'd prefer just to play the the canon, the salt or not canon, but you know what I mean, like the solid, like one, two, three, four. Like I still want to play Black Flag. Yeah, and like you know, some of them were better received than others. Black Flag was one of the high points in the series, right? And I haven't played that yet. It is on my bucket list. Um, I might stream that with Shondo or just do it solo. Yeah, it might be a fun one to stream. Yeah, because I have to get that's one I do want to play, and then maybe Origins in the future. Um, yeah, I I was hoping that they would have some significant evolutions in this one, and maybe maybe people with those expectations would be a little let down. But I think the potential is there. It seems to have a more vibrant open world. Mm-hmm. And what's also what's cool while we're on the topic of Assassin's Creed, apparently. Um, you know the boat stuff from Black Flag, which I've experienced a little bit. They mm-hmm. decided to actually make its own game, right? Uh, so, which is I think it's fan service for for that part. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I, I guess they believed in it enough to where it'll probably get a, it'll probably sell a lot that they actually went out and just did it. Uh, so I just want to commend uh, Ubisoft for that. Yeah, I think uh, as they develop their games, they see like which aspects are a hit with fans and just. Hone in on those. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we live in a time now with the internet, obviously, and uh, developers. <laughs> you could be damn sure developers are getting feedback. They're, li- they're listening, and they they're, they're 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 getting a sense of what's in demand and what's not, straight from the mouths of, of the of the buyers. So, yeah, you got to please your investors, but at the same time, you can't please your investors unless you please your buyers. That's true. So, um, another game. Yes. That uh, looks exciting uh, for me is which I've never really got into, uh, Monster Hunter. Yes, excellent. But so, from various YouTubers such as Pat from from Best Friends mm-hmm. the Switcher, uh, he's he's a really big fan of um, Monster Hunter, and he's also a really big fan of Dark Souls. So I'm a really big fan of Dark Souls. Um, so if 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 you know Pat is is into the Monster Hunter, he gets super excited. You know, that kind of gives me a signal like, hey, maybe I should look into this game. Um, maybe this would be a good point in the series for me to jump in. Um, it looks, I think it very well could be. I mean, just, I don't really know too much about it. You hunt monsters. But you hunt monsters. It looks <laughs> cool. The graphics are great. It's open world with this new one coming out. Um, so the, it, that's that's making me really want to It's kind of like a mini MMO. I think it's like a light MMO. That's that's how those games have been usually. A light MMO. Yeah, because they're multiplayer. They're somewhat grindy, but more reasonably. Um, but they're they're fun. Um, I was actually there while uh, watching the live like that reveal live, and I was like watching this this gameplay trailer. And I'm like, that's got to be Monster Hunter. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> was like I recognize it. And then when when like the Capcom logo came on, oh yeah, that's Mon- that's Monster Hunter. Um so that's pretty exciting. Yeah, uh I'm not going to lie. I watched the 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 Xbox, PlayStation, basically all but Bethesda through the best friends like they did a live stream. Right. So I watched their archived live streams of those events and just seeing the reaction to Pat, like he was exploding. Mm-hmm. And I was like that's what I want to get. Or that, like, like that's, that, that's, that's like the sort of like enthusiasm that I that I want to see. That's a series I've always wanted to get into, but, like, I had heard about it, like, while it was already kind of leading PlayStation 2. It was kind of on PSP, um, but I still, like, heard about it kind of late, and then by that point, it got passed on to Nintendo, and uh, I didn't have those consoles for a long time. Mm Mm-hmm. And I wasn't even aware that I even went to Nintendo. Like, I just... It's been on 3DS for, for, like, basically when the 3DS beat out PlayStation Vita. Yeah, it looked more like for children. I think which is why I never got into it. Maybe perhaps because Nintendo took over took it over. But uh, that's just speculation. I don't, I don't know. Um, I think that for a time it was shot at a mobile audience. Um, which sometimes has less mature themes in general. Just like it's yeah, less heavy. Yeah. Essentially. Um, so as we're talking, I'm scrolling through the list of games oh. that... Uh, because you're probably wondering what I was doing. I am paying attention. Um, I'm just just to get inspiration. So <laughs> like, um, any other games off the top of your head, real quick? Because I could t- start talking about something. Well, want to talk about Anthem? Let's talk about Anthem. So Anthem looks pretty cool, um, and it has like it seems like it's joining the similar style and aesthetic as like Destiny, Paragon, uh, Lawbreakers, 
Um, you've likened it to Dead Space as far as gameplay, some of the design of the, the yeah. mechs, mm-hmm. and maybe, maybe weapons, but we haven't seen enough yet. Okay, the weapons in uh, Dead Space are going to be unbeatable. But also, of course, yeah, Mass let's, Effect. Yeah, let's get real here. Fuck, man. The fucking buzzsaw? Hell yeah. I love the Reaper so much. The Reaper, yeah. Oh, man. I love that thing so much. Um, but yeah, like all, all of these games have like a similar style to them. I think they're very much in vogue, but they are pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Um. Yeah, the, the the third person over the shoulder, uh, you know, Resident Evil Four style uh, gameplay, you know, evolved. Um, but I guess like, well, like with the science, the, the science fiction, science tech fi- kind of, it's perfect. And Dead Space is what I feel created that. I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. In the I don't know that there was much before that. But I I feel that Dead Space created that like science fiction in, in space type deal with the suit. Right. I mean, obviously there was Metroid, which we'll talk about soon. Oh. You know, in space with the suit, but it it, it was it was never like you know third person over the shoulder style, like serious like right. stuff. Right. Um, but from watching it, yeah, it's open world anthem is, and um, you know you can play with other players, which is fucking cool. I think it's a good direction to head in uh, with like a lot of these uh, these these modern type games because a lot of people like just to play with each other and um, just hang out and do do all the stuff that we all used to like to do in single player modes, but now we can all just do it together. And it's just really cool. Like, it feels like... You know what it feels like? It feels like an RPG. Right. You know, where instead of controlling all four characters, you have your friends playing You with. have your friends playing with you. That's kind of how it feels like with these sort of games. Uh, but, was, I mean, based off what I saw, it looks cool. It looks like Dead Space. Um, definitely something that I'm going to be interested in, in, you know, looking at and seeing, uh, you know, what people are doing with that game. But really, that's all I, ha- I have to say about Anthem. Um, the, the gameplay we saw looked gorgeous. Uh, the, it, the environments yeah. are really good. It just straight, like, like I said, it just looked like Dead Space to me. As far as, and a little bit of Destiny as well. Oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, the graphics... Mass Effect came out before Dead Space. They have similar aesthetic and, uh... Oh, okay. Well, gameplay I guess, elements. I guess you can attribute that. So, that's interesting. And they were both published by EA, so I wonder if they shared, like, an engine and some assets. Oh, I bet you they did. And then speaking of Destiny, Destiny 2's coming out. I'll be honest, I don't, I'm, I don't care, but for Destiny. Oh, I'll, speaking of Destiny, I actually uh, read that Anthem um, is going to have a 10-year plan when it when it launches, and uh, that sounds familiar. That seems like the 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 strategy that Destiny touted when it was being teased and leading up to its release that they had a plan for 10 years of content for Destiny. And I feel like, in a way, it was not received the way they expected, and they've had to change that plan. Um, So for Anthem to come in with the same plan after Destiny's failed is kind of interesting. So kind of now, so, it's not to say that Destiny is a game fail, just that they had to amend their oh, plan. Oh, there's a huge fan base for Destiny. That, they just had to amend their that plan. That I was totally unaware of. Like, I have friends from work that, are, that fucking stream that game. They're obsessed with it. Oh, yeah. It was a very popular game. Um, and I think that a lot of the changes to their plan have been positive, And I think that that will continue to lead to their success. Um, but it's interesting that uh, Anthem is emulating perhaps a failed plan. Mm-hmm. Now, cool zombie games. Cool zombie games. There's a, there's a zombie game that looks really awesome. It's uh, Days Gone. Right. Is what it's called? Yep, uh, I've seen it. Sorry, uh, I underestimated your... Uh, int- your uh... Well, it was real last year, too. Yeah, I think it was. And I saw it this it year. Was. Yeah, yeah, but it looks like there's more development into it, it looks like. Um, and it looks really cool. Like, something that I'd want to get, like... It's it's got the you know the Last of Us sort of theme, but like I, I like how it's like you know you're like this uh this guy you know wearing a leather jacket and motorcycle and, uh, like badass, you know and, and and just the aspect of so he's a he's a badass dude, yeah he's a badass dude he's not the the badass dude but <laughs> um no but what I like about it is that it's different it's like World War Z a video game. Um, yeah, it's you, definitely you see, unique. Yeah, you don't see too many of them. I mean, you see a lot. You see a lot of, uh, it's a good direction to head in for zombie games because we've all seen, you know, the, the zombies, like, you know, one-on-one fights to, you know, up to three at a time. But this one is just more like, there's way too much for you to fucking handle. Right. 
um, there's a game I'm forgetting. Uh, do, 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 Dead Rising. Dead Rising. Dead Rising did that already. It's true. But this is, but Dead Rising was in a GTA format. Right. So, um, whereas this looks to be like, you know, the, the quote unquote proper format. Proper. For a zombie game, in my opinion. Of uh, like, you know. That's more of a survival game. Yeah, it feels more of survival. Um, so, I mean, it's just the swarms of zombies. It seems like you're mostly running away. So it, it could be considered almost like Outlast. I've, I've in, seen. In a sense, because that's what the, you know, the whole concept of that is. Some commentary and some gameplay indicating that. You'll want to strategize, like use the zombies um, to fight each other or other or like bears or whatever. Uh, oh my! You might want to, <laughs> you might want to manipulate the situation to your benefit. So it's not just evading; it's more complex than that. But it's it's really hard to get a real sense of the way these games will play just from gameplay demos and yeah. like short segments. But I gotta, I gotta commend when they do actually just show straight up gameplay. I remember there was there was some period there was some E3s that they were just showing movie trailers of games, mm -hmm. and it pissed a lot of people off. It's like oh, yeah. if you're gonna sell me a game, fuck show, show the gameplay. And I think they learn from it, so you see a lot more gameplay. Yeah, definitely. But like, yeah, back to days. Actually, gone. I think that was something that uh, Assassin's Creed was a victim of. Yeah, I think a lot of people were upset with certain Assassin's Creed games when they just had like uh, CGI trailers that, and then the game didn't really live up. Yeah, it's almost like they're trying to hide it. <laughs> they didn't really have a game for you. Um, but with Days Gone... Um, but like... actually, on this, at the same time, when you have these um, CGI trailers, you get a sense of the story. And I feel like when you're overloaded with these gameplay trailers, you can actually know a fair bit about the game and know nothing about the story. I think for some people that's okay, but for others it makes it very difficult to start a conversation about the game. Because the first question is, what's it about? And you're like, I honestly don't know. <laughs> and that's the worst thing you can do to start talking about something. Yeah. It's like, it's almost as if we didn't do any of our homework co before coming to this podcast. What the fuck are we talking about? We, um, but what I'm most excited about Days Gone is not just that it's open world. It, it looks open world. Um, but, but the fact of the nature of how many zombies there are and you're just constantly running away from everybody... There has to be a mechanic later in the game where you become on the offensive. How fucking fun is that going to be? <laughs> if that's true. And I think it will be. You might have to use like the environment and things like that. Like, yeah, there'll be like ways for you to eat, like in the end game, for example. Like, there'll be ways for you to just like, just plow through zombies like crazy. Now, I've actually seen, you know, like I've seen the two trailers, uh, or the gameplay videos from uh, the last two E3s, and I've actually never really been very impressed with this game. Days Gone? Nope. It doesn't really strike me for some reason. It strikes me because... Just because of the... Uh, it's a different zombie game mm -hmm. than we're used to. It, it's focusing on the quantity of zombies as opposed to quality, I feel. And I'm sure that there's... <laughs> there's there's going to be other types of enemies. But that's just what I guess. Actually, I think, like... Because there were, like, bears in this recent trailer. And I think, I think that was more exciting than zombies for me. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Fucking bears, man. Um, there's another zombie game that they did that was on the tip of my tongue. Um, it, it, it's like a, it's like a sequel. A sequel. Oh shit, Nino Kuni 2's got a, I didn't see the E3 on that, but Nino Kuni has a sequel, Revenant Kingdom. I'll also look into that later. I'm a fan of Nino Kuni, never beat it though, but, um, it's a, it's a zombie game. What the hell is it? Maybe, maybe it'll come to me. Oh yeah, so okay, so the game is called State of Decay Two. I never played, I never played the the first one, and I and um, I guess I heard that the first one also what did, didn't get very well received, or there was just wasn't a lot of people playing it. So they actually made a, they have a sequel that they revealed at E three. Um, it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's like a multiplayer zombie type game as well. I think Days Gone is going to be a lot better, um, but I just gotta say that some of the uh, the enemies, like the big fat guys, look pretty cool. And it's pretty fucking gory. Uh, but other than that, there's not really much for me to say. I just wanted to actually just bring it up in the, the podcast. You're actually a pretty big fan of zombie games. Absolutely. Fuck. Anything with zombies, you're Any, sold. Anything, no, not necessarily sold right away, but uh, I uh, I definitely pay attention to them. Yep. For sure. Um, now, a game I'm excited for, Cuphead. What now? Cuphead. Cuphead. It's the I didn't catch that one. It's uh, 
It's going to be Xbox exclusive and for also Windows 10. Um, it's like in the... It's like a cartoon animation game. Like, it's animated in the style of, like, say, like, cartoons from, like, you know, Warner Brothers, like, back in, like, Bugs Bunny days. Like, even okay. before even before that. Kind of like when cartoons were just starting to get into right. Technicolor. Neat. So, like, that's the style of the, of the the game. So, it's pretty cool. It's actually been in development for a while. Um, I believe the date is September 29th. I'll correct myself um, on screen here. Um, but it's September 29th, uh, from what I remember. Which means it's finally coming out, because I remember this was at the, the E3 um, last time, and it just got, oh, wow. a lot, it got a lot of people excited. So it's, it's just kind of like one of those... Yeah, I don't know how I missed that one. It sounds cool. It's just I always like that aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I say aesthetic a lot. Yeah, it's just one of those those games that are, that are cool. So um, a lot of people know what I'm talking about. Cuphead, baby. That's something I'll be getting. Um, I don't own an Xbox, uh, but I do have Windows 10, PC, Steam, so uh, you can expect me to play that on there. Now, a one trailer I actually thought, or gameplay even, um, that I think had a good mix of gameplay and story elements was God of War. So you had a good sense of what the story was about, you, and yeah. you had a good sense of what the gameplay would be like. Good. And they, and they collided very game. well. Mm -hmm. And I actually haven't played any God of War games. Oh my god! And, Get the fuck! <laughs> and uh, I'm interested in this I one. just slapped him, by the way, and he didn't... How my shin? I mean, he got hurt. He I heard himself hurt. slapping I, me. I got hurt. Do you want one? Yes. Um, um, sorry, guys. Water break. So, yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty interested in this God of War, even though I haven't played any of them yet. What are you waiting for? God of War four? Jeez. Apparently. No, I mean I beat all the main God of War games, like the original. When it first came out, the second one when it came out, and the third one. Um, I think I waited a little bit for the price to go down to like six bucks. Right. For the third one to come out. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking buying this. And I played the shit out of that with Shondo. I actually tried to, I actually tried beating it on uh, the hardest difficulty, but I couldn't get past the Scorpion boss. Um, but and I, and I played a little bit of like the PSP versions and stuff mm -hmm. on console. And, and I started to realize that, you know, I'm getting burned out from these games. Because the first three are basically all identical. Mm -hmm. They're just approved upon. They're 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 good. They're, like, they're almost masterpieces in a sense to a lot of people. But I'm super like chubbing right now on number four. Cool. Because it's taking it into a new direction, like the Last of Us style gameplay. You're basically it has a lot of it shares a lot of similar mechanics. Um, the combat and taking on a new mythology. Taking on a new mythology, yeah. Um, and you you have a partner, which is your your kid. Yep. So it's just like Ali. Oh, it's true. It's yeah. Just like Ali and Joel. So you're basically it's basically inspired by the same mechanic from Last of Us. Um, I haven't got my hands on it yet, but I've just seen some gameplay. Um, but it looks super awesome, man. Um, Kratos has a beard. That <laughs> yeah. Can't go. He, he's bald with a beard. So he's just, he's just it, it's like more realistic. God, it's like God of War realistic version. Um, it really makes you feel like like you're in there. Like you feel the intensity that that's going on, and and um, it's just really cool. Yeah, like uh, the old ones, you you were always doing like these absurd mythological feats, and this one's actually a little more grounded. There's actually some emotional elements to this, and there's some yeah. real uh, there's some real concerns that uh, his son might turn out like like he does. Maybe maybe he needs to, but maybe uh, Kratos would rather he doesn't. Possibly, um, you can definitely see the, the the you know the relationship between the two. It's 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 really nice. Like Kratos is is like he <laughs> understands that his that his son is you know is a little timid to learn because um, he's a kid. But Kratos like he he, he does it. He you can tell that like he's affectionate in a way of like I understand son that you're a pussy, <laughs> but I'm gonna slowly get you to become a badass. That's like, what my dad like, always like, said. Like, like your father. <laughs> And, uh, and and then even in the trailer, you see uh, that he, he kills an enemy. He he stabs a dude in the head. He does. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. It was pretty quick. Um, but I got chills during that. Uh, now this isn't the first E three for it. Um, you know they revealed it before. Right. Um, but this time around, I got chills because the first time I was like, oh, this looks just like Last of Us. <laughs> But then as time went on, I was like, I started to appreciate it. I'm like, okay, they're, they're taking the series. 
We also have monkeys in the tropical forest here <laughs> in the rainforest. But then I started to respect the fact that they were taking it into a different direction. We'll just say different. Um, and uh, it gave the, the trailer gave me chills. And so it was I think sign. I think the coolest part about the trailer that gave me chills was the end of it. The basically like the huge fucking dragon thing. Right. Do you remember talking about that thing was nuts? Could you imagine? And and then and then that was the world serpent. The world serpent. And then his son at the end of it says, "I think he wants to help us." <laughs> and it's <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> that's so awesome. So, uh, yeah, super excited for God of War. So I'm glad you brought that up. Um. <laughs> now, now we're probably just proving what big Sony fanboys we are. Come and the next one I want to talk about is another. Yeah. Sony game. The Spider-Man game. Okay, I saw that. Um, Looks pretty good. Yeah, my brother was actually a big fan of the original Spider-Man games. And those were actually, like, early open worlds. So he probably got some chubs on this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, these were kind of open world before open world, because these were on PlayStation 2. Like, I think the true open world games, as we know them, didn't start until the PlayStation 3 generation. Right. So... Uh, As we know them, because GTA 3 was on PS2. Though, oh, that's true. To be fair. That is true. And maybe that was the first open world, definitely. Yeah. Because that was a huge game. As we know it today. Yeah. Now you're right. And then, like, then, then, then uh, well, MMOs maybe, even. Yeah. Um, but, like, these these very character-driven M- or, uh, open world games, um, I believe, started mostly in... Uh, PS3, but no, I know I know what you mean. Yeah. Nonetheless, <laughs> that's where they really started to take you know to, to catch catch fire. Um, nevertheless, um, it's Creed. interesting to see an upgrade on uh, the Spider-Man gameplay. Uh, just, right, uh, web slinging along along the city and saving people, and it has this very lighthearted tone. It's about saving citizens and. A lot of like superhero games, it seems like you're doing a lot of collateral damage. And they've actually made it like a mechanic in this game of avoiding collateral damage as really? much as possible. What do you mean by that? I don't really play too much superhero games. Sean does more of the, of the... Or maybe even like movies. He so. plays Batman and stuff. And It's been a theme in movies as well. Um, I know what collateral damage is, but like I'm trying to associate it with what you mean as far as the game goes in like the movies. Um, well, they, they've made a major point of it in the Avengers series as well as the Batman uh, series. Uh, where, like, uh, when... Like, like, in the climax of the Avengers, there was so much destruction to the city, even though the Avengers ultimately won, that a later movie addresses that. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, it just destroys the city. Yeah. In the process of saving it. And... Some shit still goes down. I'm like, uh, that, that helicopter just, like, breaks up a bunch of buildings, and that's unfortunate. But Spider-Man is really trying to avoid that sort of thing in a, in a way... And they're making a, a gameplay mechanic out of it, it seems. Interesting. Um, you're, you're trying to stop more people from dying than need to, basically. And then also, can you destroy the city? I don't know. I don't know that you could, but... Pro- you're, oh, you're just speaking in the sense of, like, not killing citizens. Right. Um, I'm not really big. I probably won't end up playing the game because um, I'm just not. That's just not my thing. I'm not. I've never been a superhero guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Shondo might want to, to stream that. That would be cool. Cool. It's possible. He likes superheroes. Do you stuff. suppose uh, uh, CJ might? CJ. CJ. What's his name? CJ. Definitely. What? What, what was kidding? his name? CJ. Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think without a doubt he's he streams already on PS4. So I think without a doubt he's gonna fucking get on that <laughs> shit. Um. But uh, it looks cool. It, it, it looks like you know a Spider-Man from like PS3, like the bad one. But like, the, but they, they, it's so they, polished, they, they took it, yeah, and they improved upon it and polished the fuck out of it. Um, that's what. It, it looks like it may even have an interesting story. <laughs> like they even had the the actual web slinging mechanics because if, if you know when you're going through the city, like you said, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just it, it's just like when I saw that, I was like, well, that completes the package. Because when I first saw the trailer, I was like, this looks a lot like you know. Very similar to Batman, um, in the sense of, because I've seen some Batman Arkham City right. and stuff, and I'm like, well, this looks like they just reskinned it with Spider-Man, kind of. But then I started to see the 
the actual web slinging section, I'm like, yep, that's the full package. This is officially a Spider-Man game. Yep. Like, it's perfect. There's a lot of clever um, interactions that you can do with the environment. Um, and it's the game seems very fluid in, fluid in combat. There's a lot of fancy moves that you can do as Spider-Man. It feels like you're really yeah. Spider-Man. I saw a couple of them. I saw one of them. It's so cool. He's, like, on the rafter. And he, like, pulls the guy up. And he's just, like juggling him with the yeah. with the with the web just fucking covering him with web that was that was really cool yeah i like that and i imagine you could like use that to like swing enemies into each other things like that i think we actually saw that interesting so. i don't remember much about it but uh yeah and, like there was one part where like he made he like <laughs> fucking words <laughs> yeah fucking words we're trying to we're doing a podcast who needs words though <laughs> Uh, he like uh, grabbed uh, like the rafter or something um, with his web and like just swung it at somebody and just like whacked him. It's like nice. that was not hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> words. Yeah, fuck words. Um, and and Wilson Fisk, I uh, I always liked Wilson Fisk from. Uh, I actually have my first. Uh, my first time seeing the character, um, having not read the comics really, was uh, the Daredevil series, and he was really cool in that. I like the actor, everything. Um, so seeing him in a video game will be cool as well, and I hope they represent him well. So far, it seems like they will. Cool. I don't know who Wilson Fix is. He was the big crime boss. He was in the gameplay trailer. Okay. Perfect. Um, so uh, now Metroid Prime Four. Okay. Is a. Um, it's the fourth game in the Metroid Prime series. It's the fourth. Yeah. Thanks for uh, <laughs> for filling in for me there. Um, so, I love the Metroid series. I've I did I haven't beat the SNES version, but I but I've gotten far in it. I love it. I stopped playing it because it was too hard to figure out where to go next. I mean, mm-hmm. now it was, it was during a time in my life where I refused to do strategy guides. Now I'll fucking look that shit up just because I want to get the full experience. Um, but I stopped playing because I couldn't figure out where to go. I'm like, oh, screw it, I'll just stop playing. <laughs> right. Um, but like, but more to the point, where this is leading up to anyways, I love the Metroid Prime series. A lot of people are controversial about it. Um, I was hoping they would make another one. The fact that they're making another one is fucking amazing because we have Nintendo Switch as, as, as our current donation goal right now. And, it, and the fact that I see the games for Nintendo Switch coming out that I, that I truly... Just, I truly am excited about it makes me even more excited to get the Nintendo Switch yeah and they've got entries to basically every series they've ever had coming it's fucking awesome um but I I have the first Metroid Prime the second and I have the third one all three of them I beat all three of them um the third one I beat it on the regular Wii in college so I don't have very much memories on it <laughs> <laughs> but the first two uh, lack of memories college I see the relationship yeah so I do remember beating it though um, I have to replay that one I'm gonna replay that on stream um, so I am go- I am going to be getting around to the, the Metroid Prime series um, now but Metroid 4 Prime Force coming out so obviously I'll probably just do that one instead mm-hmm. um, if I don't get to another one earlier but uh, I just love the first person Metroid and the fact that they are making a new one everybody says that Metroid is dead and it's not you know especially after other M which I own that too on the way. Um, and I don't like it. It's okay. Um, I well, was... I don't think Nintendo's ever going to let a franchise like that die. See, but what's funny is that, like, Nintendo went back to other M because they wanted to appeal to the uh, the old school audience mm-hmm. uh, for the Metroids. But I'm more of a fan of the Prime series. Okay. I'll just say it. I'm one of those guys. There's, there's two camps. There's the guys that love the SNES version better, and then there's the guys that love the Prime series better. And girls. Um... I am in the Prime camp. I prefer Prime over the old school, even though, although I do like the old school style. Sure. But I played other M, and that game was just a flop. I mean, and I think a lot of people agree, even those in, in the old school camp as well. Um, so, uh, the, and I know that they're making the, uh, what is it, Samus Returns for the, the Game Boy Advance, which is more of like a callback to the old school. So the GBA players, not GBA, wow. The, uh, You're stuck in the past. I'm stuck in the past because the, la- the last <laughs> Nintendo handheld I have is GBA. Um, the 3DS people out there, you guys are getting that. Uh, yeah, but Wait, is it 3DS or is it Switch? I think it's for the 3DS. They're advertising it and they're actually showing the 3DS. 
That's actually interesting because the actually, Switch I'm, being I'm pretty, portable I'm actually, itself. Like, I'm, I'm going to say that it is the 3DS. I, I don't know if they're going to do cross platform. Right. Like you could just get it on the Nintendo Store or not, but um, they were uh, in the E3 conference. They were definitely advertising it with like the the overlay of the 3DS. Okay. No, that's interesting. Just because the uh, the Nintendo Switch is virtually portable as well, so I was wondering what kind of implications that would have for the 3DS. It's true. It's um, true. You're right. No, you're fucking right. It'll, it'll probably. I'm sure it'll come on the Nintendo Store for download. Yeah, maybe. And or then... either that, or they just want to push more 3DS sales. Right, but so, I would also expect maybe not a new uh, portable for at least a long time because of the Switch. Like, I mean, yeah, maybe, yeah, because yeah, they, they might just focus on making a cheaper Switch. I think that's partly what they're doing with the Switch is they're making it, they're, they're experimenting to see if they can just get away with doing a hybrid, mm-hmm. and that just I don't be, think they're going to. And that's just the future, dude. I I was not hyped for the Wii U. I was like, yeah, the Wii U looks pretty good, but I'm not going to spend money on it. Right, the Switch. Is like holy fuck. This I is... think they really perfected that concept. Yeah, and a lot of people saying that the Switch is just the Wii U two part two. Yeah, a lot it, of ways it is. Or the revamp, the, the revised version of it. And maybe the fact is they just sold it better. Like they didn't do a good job of explaining the no, Wii U. It was and... terrible marketing. It, it, yeah, I agree. Um, it was just uh, a lot of people thought that the Wii U was the. We, 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 we talked in this past podcast, so I'll just, yeah. we'll wrap this up real quick. People thought that the Wii U was basically just like the like a new controller for the Wii. Mm-hmm. So anyways, we talked that our previous podcast over before. But yeah, Nintendo games, also Mario Odyssey is coming out. Yep. That's um, always looked interesting. Um, I love Mario games. And I'm going to be streaming some Mario 64 uh, in the future. Uh, the regular, the Super Nintendo version. So, I mean, I've always been a big fan. So with the Switch coming up uh, through you guys with your donations, mm-hmm. thank you so much, by the way. Uh, we'll we'll be able to play these games for you guys that I get super excited about. Yeah, that should be exciting. And now I actually wanted to say that this Nintendo press conference is probably pretty important for Nintendo. Yeah. Um, Now, of course, the Switch is doing well. It has this killer app. Uh, It's a killer console in itself. But I think that to to keep that momentum going, it really needed a strong showing at E3. Mm -hmm. And it had it. (laughs) It definitely hit it. Whereas Bethesda kind of fell flat, Nintendo is the contrast of that, and definitely hit a home run. Um, I agree. And I think in a lot of ways, uh, Nintendo could have bolstered its library by dipping into the Wii U well. Uh, I think they, I think they just killed it off, man. Um, like you know, they, they could have it. ported games um, from the Wii U to the Switch, and they probably sell fine. They probably sell well, they're Switches doing even. Well, they're doing that with Mario Kart Eight. Right, right. But other games. That's already out. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, well, they they could have they could have done that with like there's a Zelda one. I, I don't even remember which one it is. The one before Breath of the Wild is Wii U, isn't it? Skyward Sword. Really? There hasn't been one since. They've had like 3DS stuff, I believe. Really? No, they had um, a Link Between Worlds on the 3DS. Oh. Which was basically like a spiritual successor to Link to the Past for Super Nintendo. Right. Um, but you know what? Maybe maybe they're right. Maybe even if these do come out, they can kind of release them relatively quietly. Yeah. Um, they don't need a big E three to do about it, uh, especially if they have all these strong games. No, no. They yeah. don't need that. Yeah. Um, but I was half expecting. I, okay, I was really hoping for a Bayonetta two Switch uh, uh, announcement. I but see, the fact I is, see what you mean. I don't think that just because it wasn't at E three doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. Maybe it's just that they don't need the fanfare. They have the fanfare in other in other ways. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of uh, fanfare, I thought it was interesting that, um, and I do want to go back to talking about Mario Odyssey for a little bit, but uh, I guess this I guess I could segue into that through here. Um, Can you? Um, I challenge you. Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Okay. Like I guess the rabbits. I don't know much about them. No, but there's the. There's, why don't you know? Yeah, why don't you know? Um, it's a Nintendo exclusive. Um, it's through Ubisoft though. Ubisoft yeah. makes rabbits. Right. And they're doing they're doing a collaboration with Nintendo um, and a game. Um, it's like it's kind of like almost like Splatoon mm-hmm. in a sense where it's like competitive. It looks okay. Not my cup of tea. I'm probably not going to play it. Um, but I just wanted to point out, 
you know, that I thought that was interesting. Now, is it notable very, that, very, that uh, Nintendo's doing a collaboration like that? They're usually kind of closed off, aren't they? They're, if, yeah, usually they're, they're kind of closed off. Good point. If, if anything, Super Smash Brothers is collaborative, oh. but it's more like if they're going to you know, have other franchises, they're coming to them. Right, even Capcom like, was in there in Konami. Because you got, right. you got Snake from Elder You got Saw, Snake, you got Bayonetta now. Street Fighter guy, Ryu. Yeah. So like, but a lot of times these are like those companies coming to Nintendo. It, it was kind of like Nintendo getting their feet wet. Maybe. You know, um, I think Smash Brothers is important to the Nintendo ecosystem as well. I think that's a way to keep characters relevant even while they don't have current games. It's like or, a flagship game, right? That can't go wrong. But I, like, and like, even if uh, like Metroid has some weak releases, I think the franchise is still relevant as long as Samus is in Super Smash Brothers. That's all it takes. I see what you're saying. It, it, it keeps them alive. Yeah. Essentially. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're doing class. They also collab with Sega. They do a lot of class with Sega, actually. Like Sonic. Yeah, that's true. Like the Olympics yeah. game, like Nintendo and Sega Olympics, or, so, or Sonic Olympics, or whatever it was. Um, but, I, you know, it's, it's cool. Like, we're starting to see the dawn of, like, a new Nintendo, I think. Yeah. Um, Nintendo's just fucking rocking, man, right now. They 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 did what they needed to do. They were in they were in definitely a situation where it's like bad things could happen if they didn't start listening to what we're saying as the public. And, oh yeah, and, I guess a couple of years ago people were saying it's time for Nintendo to get out of the console business. Yeah, they're fucking just straight up saying like if they're gonna they're going the way of Sega. Um, and I think they heard those responses, and also at the same time, like all, all the no disrespect, but all, all the you know old Japanese men over there in, uh, you know, in Nintendo, operate in in a old school sort of business, which I think I even talked about that in a previous podcast. Um, but uh, anyways, um, segue into I want to talk about Mario Odyssey just a little bit. Nice segue, bro. Yo, um, Mario Odyssey looks really cool. There's only there's a lot of positives to it. It looks open worlds. Um, they're trying to bring like the real world into it, mm-hmm. um, and they even have like the old school Mario uh, aspect into it, like the cartoonish uh, landscapes and everything. But it, you know, but it, 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 what's really cool about it, and I'll talk about like one negative thing <gasps> that I've I've noticed um, in a second. But I want to talk about the positives first. So uh, you remember Mario's missing? How it's like a real world esque. Yes. Type deal for like you know for the Super Nintendo, um, but so like Mario's missing. Uh, you're basically like running around in, like as Luigi running around in, like cities, talking to real people, right? Um, and you travel to different. I believe yeah, you travel th- cr- uh, throughout the world, um, different times, and you just talk to real pe- human people. And I think that's where the inspiration came from with Mario Odyssey. Because if you if because uh, if you look at it, you're running around talking to people, right? Um, I'll talk about the negative right now. Why, uh, since, since I'm talking, I'm on the subject. It might hopefully it doesn't go the way that Sonic did. Because if you look at it, like let's say Sonic 06. Oh, okay. You're you're running around in a town that looks like you know resemblance of, of Venice, Italy, and there's just a bunch of human NPCs. Does it necessarily fit? Yes, Mario is a human. <laughs> but, sort of. But all these these people look like they're just different types of humans. Like Mario's, you know, like a little person, right? So to speak. So it's like, hopefully, this doesn't go the way that Sonic did, where it's like a weird generic feel to it. That's not Mario. You yeah. See, you see, that's that's the that's one. That's definitely negative. a risk. That's the one negative I noticed. Like, ooh, this looks a lot. This reminds me a lot like Sonic 06. Now it worked out okay for Sonic Adventure Two, and I think that's because there weren't actually a lot of people. There were city that... landscapes, but there weren't people in them, for whatever reason. And to be fair, Robotnik is, is, is a, humano- a humanoid type right. creature, creature type person. So, I mean, suggesting that humans are in it. Right. So, but I don't know. That, that's just the I one thing I think they were in, like, cutscenes, but they weren't really interacting with them and hanging out with them. They weren't in your way. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, but, you know, on the flip side, I really it, it looks really cool that you're, you're in a city landscape and it just brings that real worldness to it, um, kind of like a feature of Mario that I felt has been missing for a while. That that's very resembled of the movie from like, you know, the nineties, yeah, yeah. like how the movie starts in the city and stuff. Like, because he really is just a plumber, 
Yeah, yeah. And plumber, is he actually going to do some plumbing this time? Exactly. A plumber needs to be in a, arguably a city, right? In order to keep, make a living. <laughs> Think about it. You know, that's where you have the most amount of plumbing going on. It's a fucking city. So it, it makes perfect sense. Like You know, maybe the Koopas just take really big shits. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> and um, the city name, I believe, is New Donk City. <laughs> I'm not joking. And, New Donk. And um, who's the girl that Donkey Kong tries to save? Penelope or, like, Paulina? I think it's... Yeah, Paul- yeah, Paulina. Paulina is the mayor of the city. Of course. So it makes sense now what the city is. It's called New Donk City. Yep. The mayor is Paulina. So they're so basically what they're trying to say is that this is Donkey Kong, the city from Donkey Kong. I wonder if we'll have some. Because uh, the original Donkey Kongs. Yeah. Who knows? So it all ties in together in the Mario theme, where it makes sense why it's a city. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was really cool. Um, it's got the new mechanic where you can throw your hat and transform into things. You basically throw your hat on something and you take control of it. Oh, that's cool. And there's also another mechanic to where, like, Link Between Worlds from the 3DS had where you oh, go neat. into the walls. Right. And you control as the Mario 1 on NES. It look, it's the same exact aesthetics, and you run in the walls to solve, to basically solve little puzzles to get through it. Mm-hmm. Little platforming puzzles to get through it. It's super awesome. Um, and going back to Mario's Missing, I think the whole game is going to be taking place in our real world because there's also a, a desert stage which the first reveal of it was, oh, it's a desert stage. But now the second reveal shows that it's probably actually like Mexico. Right. You know, because they're really celebrating culture in that. So, like, Mario can even work down a poncho and a uh, um, sombrero. <laughs> so, which is really cool. What kind of effects would that sombrero have? It's very cool. And I actually, and just to touch on it lately, I don't want to go deep into it. There are a lot of people saying that Mario is racist now. Why? Why? It's stupid. Look it up. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Because, stereotype. Of course. That's that's essentially what it is. But if you if you actually do some research on it, you find a lot of people complaining about it online. But I, I want to talk about it to say that it's a celebrating culture, mm-hmm. I think. so. Um, I mean, it's a game called Odyssey. He's on, he's on a quest. Yeah. He's traveling the world. I think it's great. I think it's a good direction for Mario to take in. Um, they're showing only Mexico, right? Or, or Mexican ties. Like to the real world right now, mm-hmm. um, because uh, there could I, definitely I, be others. There's going to be others, and I think that's the theme. I think they're trying to hint to us right now, just to, you know, with the three, is that you got the real world city, which resembles New York. I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, New Donk, New York. Come on. Right, New Donk City. Yeah, um, and then Mexico, which represents the desert area, which basically represents Mexico. Um, so I'm excited to see other places. I'm sure there'll be lots. So, mm-hmm. it's, and that's where I tie in my point to Mario is missing. Um, Because that's what that game's all about, basically, like, traveling and stuff. So, um, other than that, that's really all i got to say about Mario Odyssey. Um, It looks really awesome. I'm excited to play it. Yeah, um, Mario's always strong. (laughs) You're never never, never going to wrong with Mario. His his hat has eyes now. His hat has eyes. Yes. So you can just, like, pull his hat over his face and still go through there. But the downside to having Mario having eyes now is that if you play the game for too long, you have to go see the optometrist. And really yeah, Mario has an, an optometrist for his hat now. <laughs> okay. And he yeah. has, he's got to get eye checks because he actually wears contacts. Right. Um, so because of that, it's kind of a burden on Mario's adventure. Kind of I mean, it. like his his hat could wear glasses, and then he could wear glasses. But wearing glasses and being a gymnast is just fucking nice. Just no, oh, it's just a disaster. He's throwing the hat around. Yeah. You know the glasses are gonna fall off. Oh yeah, and Bowser looks like a pimp in this one. Is he a pimp? He's like dressed up all in white, like a cane and a fucking top hat. It's, like, <laughs> it's fucking cool. Um. Another Nintendo game I'm excited about, obviously, the Breath of the Wild. Boom. Haven't played it yet. Plan on getting that and streaming that as soon as I get the Switch. Yep. Um, now, why I bring it up, because there's d- going to be DLC Pack 2 coming out uh, for it, which I believe is story... That really- bird is all about the Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Uh, story... Yeah, the bird is like, fuck Skyward Sword. <laughs> I, that bird sucked anyway in that game. Um, but uh, there's a DLC Pack coming out. With like the basically like the, yep. uh, it's they're saying it's story based, where you can control like you know Z- Azora, Goron, 
Oh, neat. Um, amongst other things, even a Gerudo thief. Uh, so it's. It looks like you're controlling them. I'm not gonna say it is, but that looks pretty cool. So I just want to bring that up really quick that they did that. So it's cool how they're doing DLC and supporting that. Now, also Yoshi is coming out too. I yeah. told you every franchise. Did you see that one? Is there a Kirby? I think there's even a Kirby. Yep. Every single Nintendo franchise is coming out for the Switch. It's nuts. Um, Yoshi look alright. I'm not a big fan of it. I never really played the Epic Yarn mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, it looks kind of for kids. Kind of deal. But it's Yoshi. But it's Yoshi, but it looks like it could be fun. It, it looks like it's more catering towards the young crowd, in my opinion. I, I think that's what the Yoshi franchise is going to be, yeah. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. So you only play manly games like Mario. Mario is different though. Come on. <laughs> um, I mean, like okay, like even Kirby, for example, right? I might play that one, only because I really enjoy Kirby. I really like that game. Kirby's fun. Um. So uh, let's just say for now that the, the the games I'm most excited for the Switch are Breath of the Wild, which is already out. Mario's Odyssey. Um, uh, Metroid. Metroid. Um, and that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Um, for but Nintendo. those are some pretty big names. Oh yeah, those are huge. Oh, there's no Star Fox, is there? Oh, there is no Star Fox. Star Fox just keeps tanking. It just it hasn't really had a breakthrough success since Star Fox 64, which is a shame because Star Fox 64 was amazing. Star Fox 64 was amazing, and they tried to, to fix that with the Wii U version. But apparently that got a lot of flack, too. Just can't catch a break. No. Now, what are, so, anything else for Nintendo? I, I can't, I'm trying to look for it right now. I need Bayonetta 2, man. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> what about the name of the uh, the actual Xbox, the new Xbox coming out? Xbox One X. Yeah. <laughs> like we haven't I... really talked much Xbox, have we? There's probably a reason for it. Um, let's let's try our best at talking Xbox. Uh, it's called the X. Everybody's calling it the Xbox. <laughs> really? <laughs> because the Xbox X. Yeah. Um, wh what do you think about that name? How do you feel about naming it that? I mean, they had the Xbox One S um, for their like slim model, mm -hmm. so it's kind of in keeping with that. Where it has another letter, but it's it actually makes the other one just look dumb too. It's just like so many X's or so many letters. It's just like you're combining. You're, it's like letter box letter. I know. It's like what? Is, what does that format even mean? Yeah. But it, people are going to have a field day with that, though. Um, well, like they didn't have a field day with X-Bone? Yeah. Well, people are like, right? It's, it's human nature to identify things, like, immediately, right? Like, in a way um, that they, they can associate with them. And, like... It's, like, very tribal. Does like, Microsoft know how to count? They started with the Xbox, and then they had the Xbox 360. Yeah. And then they had the Xbox One. It's like, what are you doing? Speaking of that... Um, the one good, one awesome thing about uh, the Xbox uh, conference was that uh, it has backwards compatibility. I've always felt backwards compatibility was overrated. However, I am annoyed by like any PlayStation Three game now, because I'm like, oh, I should play like Red Dead Redemption or something. And it's like, yeah, but then I have to use my PlayStation Three. So I get it, but at the same time. Backwards compatibility is not going to sell me on a platform. So you're in the camp of people where it's not going to matter because I know that they touched, or they uh, people have been talking about how like it's not necessarily a saving grace. Yeah, um, it's not going to sell me a, a system, um, but at the same time, I kind of get it. Like I, I don't know that I will ever play a PlayStation Three game again um, because if if it, if it has a PlayStation Four version, I'll just get that. Mm -hmm. So. I am struggling here to talk about Xbox. <laughs> I'm trying to find... I, I know... Uh, now, you saw the press conference. I saw the press conference. It was the first one I watched. Okay. Um, I can't tell you about specific... Like, like, like I guess there's there's one sort of game like... 
coming that's for an exclusive for Xbox that looks pretty good. The graphics aren't one hundred percent awesome, but it's like it's the one where it's it's like a, an open world survival type game, kind of like Ark, but it's but it's like with guns and stuff. Okay, it's like a survival, like you're like in the apocalypse, scavenging. It's like Last of Us, but I, I don't think there's zombies. It was more so just like you're in the apocalypse of like our world, mm -hmm. and everybody's scouring and scavenging for resources. Um, it's like a multiplayer shooter type experience that looks really cool, and that was an Xbox exclusive. Um, I know there was uh, there was a lot of exclusives on there. I'm just struggling to figure out the games, but um, now how much time did they spend on the specs of the X? <laughs> specs of the X. Specs of the X. <sighs> Not much from what I remember. All I remember is that they called it Xbox um, console exclusive. Uh-huh. Or new console exclusive. Kind of like trying to sell, kept selling that they're coming out with the Xbox X. Um, but I can't answer your question a lot. Uh, to be honest, trying to, like I said, uh, there's, I think there's a lot of um, games coming out for other systems and uh, as well as the Xbox, so... Right, it's kind of interesting when Xbox and... Oh, I do want to talk about one game here. And PSPI. Sony, their conferences sometimes have cross-platform games. And actually, I think this year's Sony press conference had mostly exclusives, but there are definitely always going to be some cross-platform games. That's always interesting. Mm -hmm. Because they're not really spending that time promoting their platform specifically. Right. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna steer away, I think, from Xbox because I don't. I just can't talk anymore about it. <laughs> it. It's. It was an okay. It was a so-so conference. It wasn't anything special. I've never been an Xbox guy. I didn't see any sort of Gears of War uh, or anything. Um, yeah. Wow, would this be the first year they haven't had a Gears of War or Halo at an E3 in a while? I know, right? Um, New Xbox avatars. Ooh, who cares about that, though? Uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of good stuff that happened with Xbox to the Xbox people. Um, but to me, it's just like... I just saw a bunch of... Ex just to wrap up, I just saw a bunch of exclusives on Xbox that I gave two shits about. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. I can't name them, but I, it was just like, oh, Xbox exclusive, good thing. I don't care. <laughs> um, so it sounds like um, from the press conferences this year, they focused a whole of a lot on games. In the last few years, they haven't been able to. They've been trying to promote their new uh, platforms, um, like establish their the PlayStation 4, establish the Xbox One, establish their Pro or X models. Also There's been the, a lot going on. The VR, too. And VR. And actually, um, I want to segue into the VR really quick off that. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, it's nice to have all this, like, this shower of... Uh, of games now, and I think it's, this, like, it's like the true story of E three, what we all come to expect. Right, as a, yeah, but like it almost seemed like the Sony press conference was almost phoned in by their speaker because he only showed up like for like two minutes. He was like, oh, yeah. "Here's some games, all right, enjoy," <laughs> and then like he comes back out forty five minutes later. All right, here's some more games. But it was like the most successful. But it, it's true, it's like it was the most successful. Like conference. he had he had to do like fucking jack shit, but. He's like, so much swagger. He's like, the we've game. got the games, guys. The games speak for themselves. Right. It was very confident, actually, even though he yeah. had to do very little. It was um, amazing. Yeah. Um, so, so there's some actually, there's a VR game. I'm, I'm actually sad to say that it's a VR only. Um, Moss. Moss. It's, it's, it's it basically... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it looked really cool. Like, I liked the art style of it. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was a mouse, so, so it could almost cross the threshold of being a children's game but there's a certain tone to it where it seems more mature there are adult mice no yeah no but like i think of like you know fifa goes west and stuff like that right like but there but the tone of it actually looked like it could be a little bit more mature right like, as if like you're like a real mouse in danger of dying at every turn getting eaten by animals and stuff like which is cool and you know it's and, and the, what sold me was the art style yeah. I'm not entirely sure what the VR was all about, but the art style of it looked really cool. And though if I had a VR, that would probably be a game I would buy. Um, I would get. Yeah, there wasn't actually a whole lot of focus on VR. They which, had... is, which is interesting. It's probably for the best, because I think that it's not going to be a, 
appealing to everybody because it's so expensive to, to get into either a quality PC that can run VR or a PlayStation Pro plus the PlayStation VR, which is like another $500. It's expensive to get into VR. So I don't think it's worthwhile to promote VR, but it's still like having a presence there is still important, especially for the really impressive VR content. Right. Uh, some, some game examples are super hot. Uh, that's for VR. Uh, let's see. I know Skyrim is going VR. Fallout uh, was going VR. Um, like I said, Moss. Uh, so I mean, for the people that did adopt VR, they're 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 you know they're they're giving them games. Yeah, they're they'd probably be pretty happy about that. Yeah, about the offerings. No heroes allowed. I don't know anything about that. Although Skyrim sounds like a huge undertaking to bring into VR. It's got to be amazing. But the, prob the problem is, I think, with some of them... Um, I could be wrong, but it seems like they're rail shooters. Like, you're not really moving around in an open world. I, I believe that... Um, I think I could be wrong, but like... You know how like, a lot of VRs put you on a track? Yeah. If they can at least somehow get away from that, where you can actually figure out a way to like, move in an environment, like an open world environment like Skyrim... With just VR, kind of like Resident Evil did. Right. Like, they should just do games like that 100%. Alright, so, uh, just do, I'm just going to do a couple of honor, honorable mentions before we close this podcast here. Um, first of all, the Doom is also coming out of VR, which looks pretty exciting. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Doom, um, so I saw some footage of that, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know how it's going to do in VR. Uh, so hopefully that uh, turns out to be good. Um, also, a uh, there's a... a a new uh, Metro game coming out as well. Oh yeah! So like, if you know, if you're really huge onto the Metro series, that could be cool. It could be cool for you. I know Shondo's into that um, more so than myself. Uh, there's a Super Lucky's Tale coming out, which is a, a brand new um, sort of uh, IP that's like Banjo Kazooie style. It's uh, like if you're into like platforms and collectathons, um, that's like a new IP coming out. That looks pretty cool. Um, Sh uh, Middle Earth Shadow of, Mor uh, Shadow of War. I liked the trailer that they played where the guy ripped a dude's head off. I thought <laughs> that was exciting. I thought that was pretty cool. I know Skyrim, they're pushing Skyrim a lot again. I know we talked a little bit about VR. Skyrim has released like seven different times. Yeah, that's, and, that, and it's coming to Switch now. It's like, ooh, yay. Uh, <clears throat> so, really, uh, that's kind of just like, you know, just throw that out there. Honorable mentions at the end. Um, but I think uh, there was one more that actually bears a mention. We talked a little bit about Jackbox games where you have like the main game in, on the console and then you have different players inputting from their phones. Um, there's another game. In, oh, was that the Just Dance? No. Oh. Uh, there's another game, Hidden Agenda, which is like a, a thriller or like crime sort of story. Uh, we're not, I feel like I can't talk about it very much because I don't know that much about well, it That's yet. why we're just doing honorable but, mentions. Uh, Men this is honorable it's a game mentions. where you interact with the... It's like an interactive movie. Uh, and each player can have their input on what the group does. Oh, cool. Um, and it's like a voting system. That's awesome. It's like choose your own adventure with everybody. Right. Um, and then, like... there's I read about the mechanics, actually, where there's like a voting system, but there's also a system where you can override, where if... The rest of the party disagrees with you. You can force it. Cool. Um, and then if they want to counter your force, they can do that. But you can only uh, use so many of these um, overrides. So you got to use them strategically. What's the overall genre of it? Like, um, it, it sounds a little bit like Clue from what I've heard so far. Oh, okay. Um, Fucking awesome. That's and uh, the game's called Hidden Agenda because some players can have a hidden agenda... They're, they're, like, supposed to uh, sabotage the rest of the team. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that does sound so a little bit like... That can player. be a lot of fun. Uh, but we don't know a whole lot about it yet, but looking forward to it. Cool. And that comes out in 2017. So. Nice, nice. Some other honorable mentions I have. Crash Bandicoot. Um, that'll be playing on the channel. Not much to talk about it. It's just a remastered. Uh, Dragon Ball Z is coming out with a proper fighter. A proper 2D fighter. Oh, wow. uh, so that if you're a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, I'm not, but I respect the series. Uh, 
I think it's that's it's right for you, especially if you're a fighter fan. I know there's a lot of fighter fans out there excited for that. Minecraft 4K, apparently they're revamping the fucking graphical style of it. They're keeping it blocky, but they're just updating the textures, um, which sure. it, which is controversial. It, it looks pretty garbage. But uh, <laughs> um, we talked about Origins. It started at like four pixels. How is it going to get to 4K? Yeah. According to this list, Kingdom Hearts 3 was brought, was brought up in the E3 this year. Uh, I guess that's a game. Yeah. It's a beloved series. I mean, they fucking just like sp- spread it out so f- so far. It's all fragmented now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so in summation, um, E3 2017, uh, it was really good. I mean, there were some dull ones, like, you know, Bethesda or whatever. It was. It's just, like, all DLC and, like, old stuff, new, no new IPs. But, you know, they hit a couple marks, like, Evil Within 2. I'm super excited about that. I think the individual publishers will have a harder time, usually, um, than, like, the council producers that have lots of their exclusives and stuff to announce. Mm-hmm. So yeah, really good E3 overall. Uh, Nintendo did a great job. PlayStation did a good, great job. Uh, Xbox was meh, and uh, so I mean, obviously, like you know, Bethesda and Ubisoft, those are developers. Those were meh too, um, but you know, and then there was a lot more. I, I know, but it, that's basically essentially what we did our research on the main big hitters. Um, yeah, a lot of the show is going to be somewhat private. You'll, you'll have to read articles about the individual games if you want to hear more about them. Yeah, and uh, who's to say that we won't, you know, do something special for the channel at E3 someday? Like, maybe docu- <laughs> someday. go in there and document our experience. That'd be amazing. That'd be really cool. Tons of people do that already. We should do that, too, sometime. Um, I would say my favorite conference was... It's, it's, it's like almost like a tie between Nintendo and PlayStation... But I would, if I had to choose Nintendo, ah, uh-huh. but it's such a close, it's such a close uh, contest. Between well, they two. they really had a strong showing of like all the franchises, um, and it was a very crucial time to show that everyone was on board with the, the Switch. Yeah, they both had great conferences, but for me personally. I, like, wet my pants at, like, a lot of stuff Nintendo had to offer. Well, I think it's just a strong statement, considering you haven't been very involved in Nintendo. It is. It's, so far. It's fucking saying something. Yeah. It's saying something that Nintendo's doing so something like, right. Yeah. They're um, bringing us back. Yeah. So, um, anything else that you want to input here before we end this podcast? No, I think that's about it. All right. Well, uh, as always, guys, thank you so much. This, yeah, thanks this, for joining us. This was Mediocre Dude, and uh, I'm Showtime. Uh, thanks again. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, we will uh, see you guys in the next podcast. Which maybe won't take a month this time, maybe. Oh, yeah. Any words of wisdom? We, I like to do that with you. No words of wisdom. I have no wisdom. <laughs> uh, don't, don't mix syrup and coffee if you don't do either often. <laughs> Very good. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys later.